Hello, Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all the viewers are watching NCRT's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh and you have all connected with us through eVidya channel number 9 and you all know the different mediums through which you can watch our live telecast. And for this half an hour we have a session of English for all our class 9 students. The topic of the program is uh, it's for grammar and the topic will be determiners. So do you know what determiners are and uh, have you already read about them? So please uh, give us a call at 8800440559 in case of any doubts or any queries pertaining to this topic. Besides that, you can feel uh, free to connect with us through our mail ID flashing on your screens. It is dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in. And allow me to introduce you with our expert, the guest for the program today. We have with us Ms. Anshul Ma'am. Namaskar Ma'am. Thank you Simran, thank you for having me. Ma'am is currently serving at Sarvodde Kanya Vidyale from Tughlaqabad village, New Delhi. Viewers keep on writing to us, keep on mailing to us at our mail IDs and keep on calling to us. So let's begin the conversation and understand more about this aspect of grammar, what determiners are. Mama, what are you? Thank you, Simran. Hi, everyone. Today we're talking about determiners. But Simran, before we begin, yeah, um, have you ever thought that uh, why do we say that this is my pen and uh, that is a ball? Okay, as we have read in um, our previous classes, this is something close to us and we that is something far away. That's very nice of you, Simran. Yes, something which is closer to us, we use this yes. for it, and something that's far from us, we use that for it. In this, this particular uh, word, this, that, these, those, which tell us about distance, they are determiners. They determine the position of our noun and hence they are called as determiners. determiners. We will be learning about these and uh, the other type of determiners mm. today. So, let us begin and let us first look at the definition. Now, if, if, to, if you are to describe the determiners, uh, would you please read it for us, uh, Simran? A determiner is a word uh, that modifies, uh, describes or introduces a noun. Determiners can be used to clarify what a noun refers to, example your car and to indicate quantity or number, example four wheels, specificity etc. Great, thank you. So, when we talk about determiners, we know that these are the words that modify a noun, they describe a noun, they introduce a noun. For example, this is my car. So, this particular, in this particular sentence, the word my is telling us about whose car is this? It belongs to me. So, this becomes a determiner. Or, for example, I had little sugar today. So, mm. if, we, if we say this sentence, what, what do you figure out? How much sugar did I have? Little. Less. A little. So, again, a little over here is telling us about how much sugar did I intake or how much, did I did I how much sugar did I consume. These words are called as determiners. Let us look at some more examples. Of course. So, uh, would you read it for us? That cup is chipped. Great. Thank you. Next one. Priya eats little sugar. And the last one. I would like a candy. Great, thank you Simran. So, in all these words, we have that little and a as a highlighted ones and these are telling us more about our nouns. They are telling us uh, something, some more information about noun. They are describing a noun, they are introducing a noun. They are telling us that what, what exactly is this noun about. So, these I are I have a question regarding yes. that. Uh, do determiners uh, often come before a noun? Yes, you will always see them before a noun because they are supposed to tell more about a hmm. noun, right? So, we, we get to know about them when they are before, uh, they, they are before the noun, right? And uh, sometimes our students might confuse uh, uh, determiners with the adjectives right? because uh, we all know that adjectives, they do tell the quality right. of the noun. Right, right, right. So, when we talk about adjectives, we are talking about the quality of, of that particular noun. Hmm. For example, uh, this dog is cute. Now, we know that dog is cute. Here, we are telling about the quality of the dog, that the dog is cute. Yeah. But which dog is cute? This, this dog is cute, right? Okay. So, the difference between uh, this determinant and adjective is that adjectives tell us about uh, the quality while the determiners, they tell more about the noun, they introduce a noun, they bring forward that which specific noun are we talking about. Okay. Right. The exact name exact associated yes, yes. with it. All right. So, all right. So, moving on, we have uh, types of determiners. We will be looking at some types hmm. today, uh, Simran. The first one is articles. 
the next one are demonstrators, the third one are possessives and the fourth one are quantifiers. We will be talking about each of them in detail. Let us begin with articles yeah. first. Have you heard of articles Simran? Uh, yes, and if I would have been a student of 9th, everyone can say it's A and the. Very nice. So, do you know when do we use A or AN? Where, 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 how can we differentiate between A and uh, AN? Yeah, uh, we all know that AN we use uh, specifically for vowels, A, E, I, U, U and A for um, anything else. Right. Besides so, consonants. Yeah. So, we use A with consonants while we use AN with vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U, the five vowels that we have, we use AN for them and when we have anything else, anything apart from A, E, I, O, U, hmm. we use uh, the, the word A with them. Hmm. Now, we also have the or yes. as called as the, sometimes call, also hmm. called as the. When do we use the or the? Uh, we use uh, the most probably in the repetition, when something uh, has been talked quite often in the first sentence and the second sentence. So, a refer as a reference. As a reference, we generally use uh, the and also there is a notion that uh, it is used with uh, special nouns. Right. So, we do use them with proper nouns as well. When we talk about something very specific, for example, the Taj Mahal, right? So, there is just one mm. Taj Mahal in the world and we are talking about it. We use the when we are talking about something very specific and uh, it becomes the when we have the sound of a vowel following yeah. it, right? So, if we say the Taj Mahal, but it will become the egg, mm. right? Difference between the and the, it is about the sounds that we have in English and that is how it functions. Let us quickly have a look at some of the articles. So, we have A and the, we talked about. A is used in front of singular countable nouns and they are used with con, uh, consonant sounds. And is used with singular countable nouns which are not specific and are followed by a vowel sound. The, we use in front of all nouns. Uh, it does not matter whether the nouns are singular or plural or countable or uncountable and it is to describe someone or something specific or very unique. For example, the sun, the moon, the earth. Um, Simran, would you like to make a sentence with using an and uh, probably apple? Okay. Um, <coughs> sorry. An apple a day keeps doctor away. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, yes. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, very old uh, saying Same, we have yeah. heard. And it's I, I guess it's very true as well. So moving on, we have the next ones which are demonstratives. Now we began our session with demonstratives. We talked about a pen which is nearby and and probably a car which is far. Demonstratives they tell us about the location of the object. They demonstrate where is this particular noun located, and is it singular? or is it plural. Now, for example, this is a ball. Now, this ball, we are talking about a ball and uh, since it is a singular object, it is a singular noun, we are using this with it. And since it is this, we know that this ball is very close to us. Yeah. But if I say that is a ball. So, it, it means that it is at a distance to us. It is at a distance to us, right. Now, this and that, they are used with singular nouns that are near and far respectively. These and those are used with plural nouns that are near and far hmm. respectively. For example, uh, these are a pair of sunglasses. Hmm. Now, these sunglasses we know if they are near to us, we will be using these with them. But if those sunglasses are kept far from us, we will be using those. Those are those. the pair of sunglasses. Great, yes. Would you like to try a sentence using these and uh, a, a fresh bouquet of flowers? Okay. Uh, these are a fresh bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Very simple, Simran, right? <laughs> right. These are a fresh bouquet of flowers. So, when we say these are a fresh bouquet of flowers, we know that this object is very close to us. Mm. It is in our close proximity and hence we are using these with that. Uh, would you like to try one more with those and pots like flower pots, something of that sort? Uh, those are few flower pots uh, kept on that table. Very nice. Those are few flower pots that are kept on the table. Now, we know that we are talking about those flower pots which are kept on the table and they are at a distance from us hmm. and hence we are using the word those. Great. Thank you Simran. Should we be going ahead? Do you of have? Of course. Of course. Alright. Great. Now, we also have quantifiers. Quantifiers, they are uh, phrases that basically answer questions like how many and how much. Um, now, now let us look at our, our example that we talked about earlier. I had little sugar today. Yes. Now, if I say I had little sugar today, how much sugar do you think I have had? 
very less very less so if if i have to put a number to it okay uh, <laughs> then probably i should know maybe uh, just one spoon of sugar one spoon of sugar so when i say little sugar it means the quantity of sugar was very less it was not 1 kg it was not 2 kg mm. it was probably 100 grams probably 50 grams mm. so these words they tell us how many and how much they they talk about if the particular thing that i have consumed is a lot is it less is it more is there a number to it uh, for example simran if i say that i had 5 apples today so what do you figure out from it that you have five apples <laughs> <laughs> that i all oh, guess that i have five apples <laughs> and i i i ate them all probably yes. so five apples they tell us that yes i had apples but without the number 5 you wouldn't have been able to figure yeah. out how many apples i had so yes we get to know the uh, quantity the exact quantity of exactly. any subject when we talk about quantifiers as determiners they determine how much or uh, how many of this particular noun we have taken um uh, one more example probably could be i drink plenty of water every day now when i say i drink plenty of water every day that means the amount of water i'm consuming is is a lot right yes uh, how much do you think it is 9 to 10 glasses maybe um, 11 to 12 liters <laughs> very like i i <laughs> that's very nice of you to say simran i was actually shocked with 9 to 10 liters but it's it's a little less than that okay. <laughs> but yes when i say plenty of we know that there is enough there's little more than enough for that matter and uh, that that's how we get to know that what is the quantity of our particular noun now there are certain words which are used with uncountable nouns and certain words which are used with countable nouns for example if i say a bit of hmm right so this is something that is used with uncountable nouns i had a bit of rice in the morning now if i have to consider rice as a unit i don't sit and count how many rice pieces are there yeah. it's whole as a unit that's why we are using a bit of hmm. but if i say i had several apples today right apples stand as as a single unit if I, if they are on the table hmm. i'll immediately get to know how many apples are there so that's why we count them in countable nouns okay. and we use the words differently but there are certain words which we use for both too now for example i had some money left in my pocket after the shop after the shopping uh, event now this means that yes there was some money i could ca- have counted mm. it but i of course did not because probably i was very scared to know how much money was left and uh, yes these are some words that are there on your screen that can be used as uncountable nouns some can be used as countable nouns and some can be used with both hmm. uh, simran would you like to try a sentence with lots of i have lots of pens at my home <laughs> very nice so yes we know that she has a lot of pen at home and uh, these pens we know that yes we don't know the exact number but we do know that they are a lot they are not maybe one huge in quantity very huge in quantity i totally agree to that now we also use numbers in quantifiers numbers like 1 2 3 they also tell us the quantity of a noun for example i had 5 bananas in the morning hmm. so this means the number 5 is telling me how many bananas i had so we also add numbers to quantifiers hmm. so simran would you like to try one more sentence okay uh let's go ahead with all or the word all okay uh maybe all are my friends <laughs> all are my friends <laughs> yes so and that is very true about simran <laughs> as well all are my friends and uh Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt Simran. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yes, we know that uh, this with this word we know that the friends we have here are are all like the people around here are all Simran's friends mm. and we know that they're countable people. Are yes. they countable people yes, Sim- they Simran? Yes. All right. Now, these are our quantifiers they tell us about the quantity the noun has. and they tell us about phrases like how many and how much hmm. now we have talked about three uh, parts of uh, three types of determiners simran we have talked of articles hmm. which has a 
an and the we have talked of uh, quantifiers which talk about how many countable and how much countable and uncountable yes and we have also talked about demonstratives this that these hmm. those and they are the words that are telling us more information about the noun they are modifying the noun they are telling us about them and they are give they are they are be always preceded details by noun details of the noun details of the noun great uh moving on should we move on sure <coughs> all right so we have the last one which are known as the possessives hmm. now i'm sure uh, everyone has heard the word possession possessive words like uh, these which means belongingness hmm. which means that something belongs to me for example i possess a pen that means i have a pen it I, belongs to you it belongs to me right so possessive determiners they tell that who or what owns something right is it me is it you is it the watchman is it the uh the the vendor is who who is the person who's owning all these things now if i look if we look at the sentence that's on our screen i am looking after her dog right so through which word do we get to know that who does the dog belong to her her right thank you simran so it is through her we get to know that this dog belongs to her it is her Or maybe dog maybe someone else and not me exactly maybe someone else it could be varun's dog it could be any friend's any, dog anyone's but it's not my Mine. dog hmm. it's it's her dog so these are the words words like your his her its our their they tell us about who does this thing belong to hmm. right now it's very important that we we see Uh, the correct usage of it i mean um, this is something i've observed a lot in my teaching practice as well that children do get confused between his and her hmm. so pronouns also need to be very clear because a lot of times uh, we get confused that where do we use his where do we use her and we intermingle and we use them incorrectly so we also need to be very clear in terms of possessive determiners that we are using correct pronouns alongside now um let's uh, come to the second example would you like to read it for us simran hey that's my one that's my one now over here we do get to know that one is a word it's a counting yes. but do you think it's function functioning as a number over here no i don't think so it's functioning as a pronoun right maybe object some something that uh, I, i do believe a solid thing i, a, I think a, a, a something right yes. it's a thing basically so one as a one also functions as a pronoun over here and it means that uh, you know it's it, it's a reference to something as yes. you rightly pointed out now that's my one right if there's a bottle kept over here and i would say that's my one hmm. you get to know that this is the bottle i'm talking about and this is it belongs to you it belongs to me so we need to be very careful of the pronoun usage with the possessive determiners hmm. and we need to practice more and more so as to enhance and of course uh, make as little mistakes as possible so when would you like to uh, try a sentence with your okay so i'll try and do it along <laughs> so i'll try and do it <laughs> so i'll try and do it again so it is your pen thank you so this is my pen and that's how we got to know who does it belong to simran said that this is your pen and hence i took it i know that it is my pen yes. and hence it belongs to me now saying uh, talking about all these things we have figured out that we have four types of determiners mm -hmm. we have articles in which we have a and which talk about nouns that are uh, uncountables and uh, Uh, and they talk about well. right and uh, they talk about how uh, we put use sounds in english i'll 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 ask you one example okay, simran okay. do we say that he is a honest man or an honest man he's an honest man why do we say that we have h it's a con it's a consonant uh, we might have h but uh, it resonates with the sound of a vowel that's o very uh, rightly pointed out simran so in english language we always and always work upon sounds we don't exactly work upon what's what's written uh, on the paper mm. we work on sounds because a lot of time there words that are silent as well which are not pronounced so an honest man never a honest man because it's not honest it's mm. honest right so we use the o sound the a sound yes. that gives 
and to its vowel. The same way we have determ uh, we have uh, demonstratives, we talked about this, that, these, those, we talked about how they talk about singular and near objects and plural and far and plural and uh, uh, far. So, we have this that talks about something close and is singular, we talked about that which is far and singular. We talked about all these things and then we moved on to quantifiers which talk about how many and how much. We talked about how uh, these words they tell us that what is the quantity of our noun. They also include numbers in them. We have words like if we say 60, I have, I have 60 pens at my home. That means it is telling us how many pens I have, I have at home. And they include words like little, a lot of, some, many, these words they tell us about the quantity of our noun. Now lastly we talked about possessive determiner, they talk of how uh, or, and, or sorry, uh, who does this thing be belong to, Belongs right? to who so owns it. You gave me this pen saying that it is your pen, that meant that this pen belongs to me. Hmm. So, these words they are the ones that tell us about belongingness, they tell us about who does this thing belong to, words like his, her, its, your, their, whose, these words they tell us about the belongingness. So, Simran, any, any questions, any doubts? Yes, uh, I would really like to know that it is an interesting concept to understand about determiners. What are the common mistakes that students uh, usually do in their examinations or uh, in their sessional examinations? So, uh, what I have observed is the first mistake children do is they are unable to identify the noun in the sentence. Okay. A lot of times uh, when children have not practiced enough, hmm. they they uh, get confused between a noun or an adjective. So, uh, like we have the last sentence, right. hey that is my one. So, one it uh, might or might not appear like a noun to Very many true. students. Yes. So, these of course are, are tricky sentences mm. that we talked about because I wanted to bring pronouns into picture Yes. and we need to be very clear, we need to practice a lot because there are certain pronouns that, there are certain words that also function as other parts of speech. We have mm. come across a lot of them, the same way we talked about one today that functions as a number and as a pronoun as well. Mm. Now we need to practice and that is the first mistake that I have observed. Alongside what I have also observed is that children tend to miss on the sound part of learning. They, they you know usually with a and the, the, they tend to miss that with vowels and and the are used and with consonants the. a and the is mm. used. So, we need to practice more and more and we need to read correctly in order to enhance our skills. These are two common mistakes I have figured out. And I think uh, when you have practiced, learned it so much, uh, something that uh, students will forget is that they are called determiners. Right. Only they will remember is the correct form of the sentence as we do now. <laughs> true, very true. It is functional grammar basically. Yes. Once you start using it, the parts of speech get uh, you know carried away. We just remember <laughs> that yes, somewhere we learned these rules. I think one more mistake I have observed Simran now that I am reminded of it. Many people call it determiners. Yes. Right? I am sure everyone must have heard but of it. But that is determine. Determine, it is coming from determine to figure out, to, to see what exactly is it meaning. Mm. So, determine to determiners and we call them determiners and not determiners. All right. So, <laughs> that, that was it for today's program on determiners and thank you so much for connecting with us and sharing these insights with us. So, I believe that we have learned uh, for like all kinds of determiners. Now. Yes, we have talked of all kinds of determiners, major kinds are some little ones okay. we will cover in the next session. All right, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all the viewers for connecting with us in this particular live session of English. And uh, viewers, before wrapping up this conversation, here is an important piece of information for all of you regarding the availability of NCRT textbooks. NCRT textbooks for the academic year 2023 to 2024, they are available all across the country. You may purchase them directly from the different sales counters of NCRT. Also, if you want to place an online order, that's also possible. And besides that, if you would like to download these textbooks in the soft copy version or the PDF version, you may do it from the different platforms, one of them being Diksha platform, ePartshala website, NCRT's official mobile application. And again, viewers to explore more about authorized vendors, feel free to scroll the website of NCRT, that is www.ncrt.nic.in. Do not go anywhere because next up we have our program of science for all our students of class 9th. And the topic that we are going to study is 
why do we fall ill quite an important concept for us to understand learn and grow so keep watching it with their channels we will be right back within few minutes namaskar